Welcome to this ANSYS How-To Series video for ANSYS Grant to EDUPATH. In this video, we'll be introducing the Eco Audit tool within the software using a simple example. This tool allows you to identify which part of a product's life cycle dominates in terms of environmental impact. It also allows you to investigate how design changes can impact this environmental impact. Finally, the tool allows for comparison of multiple similar products. Let's open the Level 1 database. The Eco Audit tool can be found in the main toolbar. Clicking the Eco Audit button will open a new tab within the software. We can see here that there are three major sections where we can fill in information regarding our product and its life cycle. The material, manufacturers, and end of life of our product, the transport of our product, and the energy use of our product during its life. To demonstrate how to use this tool, we will use an example of 100 plastic water bottles. We can start by labeling our product, in this case, plastic water bottle. Our example situation for this audit is as follows. 100 one liter PET bottles of mineral water are filled in a factory in France. They are driven 550 kilometers by truck to England, where they'll be refrigerated for two days before consumption. The first information section of our Eco Audit relates to what is called the bill of materials for our product. Here, we can state the quantity, component name, the material the component is made out of, the recycled material content of our component, the mass, the primary process used to form this material, and how it is dealt with at the end of its life. For our water bottle example, we have three components, the bottle, the cap, and the water inside our bottle. All three of our components will have a quantity of 100. We can label our first component, the bottle, here. Our bottles are made of PET, which is a thermoplastic. Notice in the material family folder structure that electrical components are available within the software only for the Eco Audit. Press OK when the material of interest is selected to apply. For our example, we will use virgin material, so leave the default option of virgin 0% recycled. Our bottles have a mass of 40 grams or 0.04 kilograms. Once the material is selected, primary processes become available. We will select polymer molding. Our final choice is end of life. Here, we will choose landfill. We must repeat this process for the bottle caps. Once again, we have 100 caps labeled here. The caps are made of polypropylene. and the recycled content is 0%. They have a mass of 0.001 kilograms and are molded. They are also sent to the landfill. Our final material to input is water. The reason? The water adds weight, which can impact stages later in the life cycle. To enter this, we skip the material selection and simply add a mass of one kilogram. How a product is transported can also have a large environmental impact to our product's life cycle. In our Eco Audit, we can enter our transport stage, transport type, and the distance traveled. Multiple transportation stages can be entered for one product. In this example, the bottles are transported from the factory to the store. For our example, we'll call it factory to store. Our transport type, a 14 ton two axle truck. The bottles were transported 550 kilometers. The third and final section to enter in our product life cycle information is the use section. This takes into account energy used during the life of our product outside of travel and manufacturing. 
First, an estimate of the product lifetime if needed. The country of use helps calculate the carbon emissions and energy usage using a certain country electricity mix. Next, energy used while the product is either static or mobile. The static mode is for when the product itself uses energy. The mobile mode is for when the product is part of a vehicle. For the static energy, the type of energy input and output, example is electric or thermal, must be known, as well as the energy power rating. Details for usage in days per year and hours per day can also be entered. For the mobile energy, the fuel and mobility type must be known. Usage in days per year and kilometers per day can be entered here. For our example, we assume the product lifetime is a year. The country of use is the United Kingdom. Our water bottle is not part of a vehicle, so it is static. The energy during use for our bottle comes from the refrigerator, keeping it cold. Refrigerators use an electric compressor to cool the water, so we will select the electric to mechanical for our energy input to output. It is possible to get the energy used by existing products from their manufacturers. Here, the refrigerators use 10.5 megajoules per day to cool one cubic meter, the space needed to store our 100 bottles of water. This equates to a power rating of 0.12 kilowatts. We estimate that our water is cooled for two days and for 24 hours a day. After all of that information is put into the audit, we are ready to create the report. You can add pictures and notes. Let's add a picture of water bottles. To view the results of the audit, click on the detailed report. This opens the next tab where the report is generated. You can see our water bottles here with the results as a bar chart. The energy is in orange and is here, showing that the most of the energy is used in making the materials. The CO2 footprint bars are here in purple. Numerical values for all of the quantities are given in a table at the bottom of the page. The report responds immediately to any changes made in the Product Definition tab. For example, if we click the Product Definition tab at the top of the page to get back to our Audit Information page, and change the end of life of both components to Recycle, and then go back to the Report tab, we can see that the end of life columns have become negative. There are links in the report to information on the figures. By clicking on those links, you can view tables from the following pages of the report containing a breakdown of the data. Here is a button to help us export the file. You can choose Excel, PDF, or Word format. Simply save the report onto your computer for use in reports or presentations. Now, if we go back to the Product Definition tab in the Reports section, another functionality we can look at is the Summary Chart. By clicking on Summary Chart, we have the possibility to quickly look at the bar charts in the Detailed Report tab for the energy consumption and CO2 emissions. Another functionality of the Eco Audit is to compare different versions of a product. To do so, we have three options at hand with the Compare With button. We can compare with a copy of our product and modify some factor. Examples are material re recycle fraction or transport type. We can compare it with a new product or a saved product. Let's take an example of comparing with a saved product. Earlier, we created an Eco Audit project file of our water bottle made of glass. The summary chart automatically updates itself with the data from the glass bottle file, which allows us to easily compare the environmental impact of the two products. The glass bottle seems to have a greater impact in all of its life stages. 
You can copy this chart and paste it within any other document by clicking Copy. In this how-to tutorial, we've covered the EcoAudit tool within Granta EduPack. We've seen how it can be used to identify which portions of a product's life cycle have the highest environmental impact, and seen how we can directly compare different product design choices to see how this affects the environmental impact. More information about Granta EduPack can be found in the description below. Be sure to check out our channel for more ANSYS learning videos, and thank you for watching.